It's Coach Keaton and Crawford here at the Grand Traverse Pie Company, corner of Hagedorn and Grand River. A stone throw away from Michigan State University, where this Spartan dog, Kerry Keaton, he plays for the Spartans in the mid to late 80s for the late George Perlis. Who's the dude? He's a walk on. He was a, first of all, I got. I'm gonna full disclosure here. I have to apologize to you because I don't like telling somebody I'm wrong. And we argued last week. When was the start of high school football? Two years. And I kept saying August 5th. And I was I was stuck in the mud on that thing. And and you you didn't jump down my throat. You knew I was wrong, but you just rolled with it. So I speak well of you. That's what good partners do. <laughs> Look out for each other. I just want to try to get there a week early. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, another full disclosure thing. You know, you know, you're one of I know a lot of these Spartan dogs, and, uh, former Michigan State football and basketball players, and you're in the top ten. Okay. This this dude might might be my my number one. <laughs> yes. Jay Green out of Flint, Michigan, played for Michigan State football and. We did some radio together. You come yes. over with that. We, we do some man, and I, you know what? Uh, I learned a lot. I, mean, I respect this guy, but I, I you know, you, you were getting a little bit nicer to me than you didn't have that edge <laughs> to me that Coach Caden had to me. I mean, you brought it soft, even though I'm a Michigan grad, and you say, hey, you know, we're a Michigan guy. You're not bad, so no, I not, commend you for that, and I thank you for that. Not hey, at all. I, I appreciate you always, especially being my favorite Wolverine. Ooh. For sure. You, but you know, that's a relative term. A favorite Wolverine. I mean, that's thing, but that means a favorite of something that's not good, right? Yeah, because I, I, ne I never say that word only yeah, when I'm right. referring to you. Yeah, yeah. Right. only right. when I'm referring right. to you. Right. We talk, and another one of our bonds is, you know, I mean, you grew up in that town. I've always appreciated the town of Flint and the, and the, the incredible athletes that come out for both Michigan and Michigan right. State. Definitely. Go back to my one of my heroes, who's a friend of mine, Wayman Britt. Yep. Uh, at Michigan in the, in the, in the late seventh flood order state championship back to back. And yep. My God, we could go out and then carry me falling asleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about Flint. <laughs> Hey, I spent a lot of time in Flint with my dad in softball with Joe Max and Determination oh, 20 okay. and T. Wow. Huley. And I, nah, I know my Flint people now. Okay. I'm saying softball. I know my Flint people. J.J. know. I spent a lot of time in Flint. I get saddened by what's happened to Flint when those, those, of course. You know, those just prestigious high schools that they had a thousand in their graduating class and those days are, are yeah. done. But uh, hey, we can still go back and. Uh, Tell us a little bit your background, Jay, for people I know it, but uh, came out of Flint Central, the yep. Indians. Yep, graduated Flint Central in 1990. Okay. Uh, I was a, a high school All-American in football and basketball. Uh, I didn't play basketball my senior year due to the knee injury that I suffered during football season. Uh, decided to come to Michigan State after having several offers. Uh, came here as a receiver, left as a tight end. You know, okay. Michigan State is... So, so you, you came as a receiver and you left as a tight end. Is that because of the training table? Is that how that changed? No, it was more so because of injury. Because once I, once I injured my knee, I was in a cast for about two months. So okay. I couldn't do anything. And so I gained, you know, I was so used to being active. So I gained probably about 40 pounds. So by the time I got to Michigan State, I was probably about 250 already. And I had to still have another knee surgery. So with, with everything you know that was involved, I wound up again gaining more weight. And then, you know, speak of training table, training table makes it kind of impossible when you're talking about trying to lose weight because you go in and you see all of this wonderful food. Well, and this is the George Perlis era, okay? Right. Yes. You know what the Perlis is? Steak, chicken. <laughs> exactly. The Perlis era I hear about Steak. all the time, man. Just beef them up, baby. There are, it, there are foods that I, the first time I ever ate was at training table. Matter of crab legs. I have never eaten crab legs before until a training table. So at diverse Michigan State. <laughs> yes, yeah. but I, I, don't, I don't like the work you got to put in to eat crab work. legs. So crab legs, I, I, I like crab meat, but actually cracking it to, to get the meat. Yeah, it's too much. Ribs you just bite and eat though. Exactly. I mean, you got to take a shower. 
Well, that's if you don't know how to eat or you miss it. No, I don't know. I can deal with that. Right. That's what the, that's what the country <laughs> napkins for, baby. Sure, we're good. Crab legs. So, uh, George Perlis era, after, right after this. No, I, I, my left. first year I was with him. My first year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, okay. so that that so, was back when he you had the. you were all the way. I mean, same you were gone before Saban. Yes, I was gone so before Saban. You didn't get the pleasure of playing for Nick Saban. Not at all. I heard a lot of Saban stories during my time here because yeah. there were guys left over yeah. that played during his time. I so I heard a lot of Saban exactly stories. No, nah, but I mean, look at what he's done. So I would think that there's a method to the madness kind of. The results are proof yeah. of the foot. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, these two Spartan dogs uh, were at practice yesterday. We're going to talk about that in a second. But I want to go back to the last weekend. This has been a tradition. Spartan dog convention con. What, 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 is that what it's Spartan called? Spartan dog here con. Here Spartan dog friend, a former player, former linebacker, captain, who's uh, now with the uh, athletic directorship. That department um, puts that together. And uh, great. How many, how many guys do they have? No, it was over 100, I want to say. Over 100. Okay, I saw the golf outing. I saw some other pictures. Yeah, because a lot of guys would just come in for the golf outing and stay that day. Yeah. And then they got to shoot back or do whatever. Other guys like me, I was too busy on Friday, and I don't golf. I couldn't do Friday, but I spent all day Saturday out there. So, so I want to, you know, I just want to get the vibe that you got. I know first year Jonathan Smith, new guy, you're just getting to know him, the Mel Tucker parties were notoriously fun. You know, it's this house a little bit sure. different perhaps. You may have, you know, Carrie, you go first. What, what was your takeaway? Well the thing the thing about it well the thing well what's the thing about having that coach Tucker, like he or he invited us to his home. So when you get off campus, they you there was uh, uh, adult beverages and that kind of stuff. So guys were that really comfortable. Yeah, you really, you're really more comfortable. You <laughs> right. Know, with I, that. I don't drink, but you know, our guys do. So, and then in the environment, you know, it was a lot more just. Well, it's family. Lay, yeah, it you was. More it, was it was. It was you really. Me, you text me laid pictures. Back. And then, um, and then this coach Mitchell's first year, so you know, is he? You know, he's still finding his way, but we had it was um, the Friday night was at the Brookshire, so you could stay there. After oh, you get done, yeah. So yeah. after you got done playing, that's for the uh, entertainment oh, for the gotcha. evening. Or you could go do your own thing. Yeah. And then Saturday was there all day, and then we had great food from uh, Saddleback and meat. Yeah, I mean the spread was amazing. Right. And you got to sit and talk with our old dudes, and uh, we got to sit with the younger kids that are playing right now because they have practice, which was I I didn't understand. I realized that in the last couple of years now. They call them OTAs where they practice in the summer. You know, we never had that kind of thing. And then you had the uh, recruits that were there. Which is huge. So you because get to sit and talk to those, you know. the family ingredient, which every program is trying to achieve Sure. That. And I believe Darian said we are one, uh, we, are, we are the only program that does this with a program that brings back the, old, the older guys. You start guys bringing the players back, yeah. Yeah. Michigan's got barbecue at the big house, but I don't think that, I don't think that that's, that's not a reunion weekend. Right. I, I think it's a great idea because so, you can pass the message on to me. I mean, I mean truly. Out. I mean because like I we talked about before, you know, I haven't seen I haven't seen William Reese since I left school in 1991. Oh, he was a player. And you know, seeing William William looked just like he did 20 years ago. I mean, yeah. like. It was amazing. It made me feel so good. And that's why I try to tell the guys that I talk to, you know, when they talking about coming, like, bro, just come on Saturday. You know, or just come just come because being able to see each other and to talk and reminisce and that kind of stuff, man, there's nothing like that because you know, other than my wife and my kids or that's probably the best five years of my life. Well, no, no doubt. I mean you well know, actually in as far as bonding in your relationships. Yeah. I think with, with especially you guys were football players, you have a special. But I like, I you know, non-student athlete, but I had a fraternity in those fraternity. I mean, you get those fraternity brothers. I mean, we're lifelong friends. You sure. have you have a huge fraternity, and then what I also appreciate about your program, Michigan's program as well, is that you guys take ownership. It's like it's still your team, right, Jay? I mean, oh, you're definitely. in practice. 
you're at practice a lot. No, definitely. I think that, that you have to take ownership of it to make sure that everything stays the course. Yeah. You know, I think that we have standards that we stand on around here and that we live by, and that's the way that you, you know, kind of make sure that it stays that way is by being involved and not necessarily, you know, as, as far as making demands or anything, but just, you know, giving input wherever that you can, especially, again, you got a new staff that's coming in who don't really know what the lay of the land is and yeah. don't understand what Spartan Dog really means. Well, you got Courtney Hawkins on the yep. staff. Anybody else? Demetrius, Demetrius Martin. Martin. Yep. Oh, yeah, Demetrius Martin. Okay. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's... Passing that message along. That, no. help, that help, well, we got the young kid, uh, LaRue, from California, four-star DB, yeah. signed last weekend at the Spartan Dog Con. Okay, so when you... When you go to practice, Carrie, what do you pick up? What's your, what do you see? Do you see fun? Do you, what do you, what's your closest and Well, I'm looking, you know, I'm, I'm going to spend most of my time over with Coach M and, and the offensive line because that's, that's, your that's what I do. And I, you know, I'll go look at the defense. I got to watch my man Charlie Baker make a couple plays yesterday. So that was, that was, that was good to see Charlie out there getting this thing going. He's getting reps. Um, yeah, with the threes, you know, yeah. getting that say, hey, man, there's a couple plays away. You, you never know. And you're not just standing around. Yeah, it that's is. a win. And, and he's thick, right? he's thickened up a little bit already. Just, just in the couple months he's been out there. That, so that's a pleasant him. surprise. Absolutely. For this early. So in a couple two years, might be a problem. Charlie Baker might be a problem. Two years, it might not be walk-ons no more. Not be walk -ons. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing. The way they're talking now with this. Move to 105. Basically, is going to eliminate walk-ons. Oh, from not from 85 to 105. Yeah. Okay, so that was when I was in college. It was 105, and then it went to 90. Well, first of all, it started at 130. 130 scholarships. Really? In the six late 60s, wow. and then it went oh. to and then it went to 105, then it went to 95, then it went to 80. So that means the haves are going to be having more. <laughs> But the haves and have-nots might gap, make that larger. Well, I think the thing about it is, is like we was just talking about, is it might eliminate walk-ons all together. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's the whole which, thought which is not, not a good thing, you know, because... They're going to have to go to lower levels. Well, it's going to help the hell out of D2. That's true. They're going to get a ton of kids. because I mean, it, it, typically most teams are around 105 anyway. But it's 85 plus that. Now you talk about 20, you know, those more scholarships taken away or, or given to the Power Four, they're not going to, you know, then it just becomes a question of how you manage it. So you're going to still have those, but then you're going to go, you have, say, 10 for the portal, you know, all that kind of stuff. But not having to walk, I mean, it's, I mean, it kind of got eliminated when Nebraska used to have basically two teams back in the 80s and 90s because they had so many walk they had so, so many So back players. in the 70s, Iowa would offer full-ride scholarships to guys that would, and players who would turn them down to walk on in Nebraska. <laughs> believe that. Wow. This, was, this was in the Bob Cummings year of Iowa football sure. um, where it was, they were bad. Yeah. This, well, Before it. Hayden Fry. Hayden Fry got there and all of a sudden life changed for the yeah, Iowa good. Hawkeyes. But um, in a good way. So, okay. But, yeah, but going to pre I mean, I, that's why I spend my time watching them and, and, and looking for the improvements yeah. and, you know, just the energy, that kind of stuff. What, what are you seeing, Jay? When, when you, and you're very straightforward. You don't sugarcoat those things. Um, what do you see in this team right now? I just kind of go out and just like to be in Mike? the atmosphere. Like, I don't I don't necessarily try to critique anything. But are you feeling a vibe? What's the vibe you feel? I feel it, it's very structured. It is definitely very structured. And I feel like a lot of good work is being put in. Um, and not that it wasn't being put in before, but you can just tell that he is, he is all about the work, you know, the work, making sure that the work is done. And that's the thing that I take away from watching practice. And everybody is laser focused on getting things accomplished and, and, and accomplishing goals together pretty much. That's what I get out of it. Does it, when you look at it offensively, is it going to be different than last year's team? No, I think it's definitely different because I, the one thing I always felt like about our team 
is I felt like other teams' scheme, we just ran plays. And I feel like the offense that we have in place now actually schemes and tries to take advantage of, you know, situations or mismatches or whatever the case may be. I, I always tell people that seeing Nathan Carter actually catch a touchdown in the spring game that was downfield, you know, it was kind of eye-opener for me as, as far as how different things really are because that's just something I don't think that I've ever seen an MSU running back catch a pass downfield that wasn't like a, a, a check down or something of like that nature. I got you. Out of the flat, yeah. Correct. So, your man, A.D. Giles, quarterback, transfer from Florida State. He comes on the last couple. I'm not, I'm not criticizing him. But he says he's the best quarterback in the game. That's not, that's not what he said. <laughs> what did he say? He said every quarterback comes in with the mindset that they want to be the best in, 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 at their position, which they all do. And anybody who says they don't is a damn fool. Like who? Once who, again, who preface, chooses? Not, I wasn't being critical, but I, yeah, I, nah, I, they they took that they took that out of out of context, out of context. And, and put it Damn, together. Sports media, you know, right? probably but, a, probably a mission. You know, if if you know, if right? he doesn't if he doesn't think when he walks out on the field that he's the best quarterback, then I don't want him playing quarterback. What do you see? It? What did you see in him? Oh, he definitely. I, I I really like him. You know, like we talked about before, he has the potential to be extremely, extremely Does he good. He have the potential to be the best quarterback Michigan State has had in recent times. If if he's given the right people around him, which Grizzly is going to come up front. If the offensive line can do their job, he's going to be special, truly. So, uh, Connor Cook asked that kind of guy. Billy Burke? What, 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 what? I'm thinking of other good quarterbacks. I mean, it's you, when you Banks. watch him play, it looks like Banks. Tony Banks. Tony I mean, he Banks. moves like Tony. I mean, he moves like that. And he throws the ball like that. Tony he throws Banks, the ball man, very well. He had cannon. Man. Yeah, he throws the ball very well. But he, run, he, man, he well, runs, he he runs very well. Too. You know, he runs very well. And, and, and the backup kid is good, too. The kid from North Dakota, he's good, too. You know, but I, he has a... He knows where he's at, and he know that he understands that he hasn't been a starter, and he's played, but he hasn't, you know, he hasn't truly had the keys to the bus, and so he's working, he's putting in that work with those guys, extra, to get, you know, to prove, you know, that he wants to be the best and, and, and do his thing as a true sophomore. So when you saw. Green that uh, Michigan State was picked in the morning. They picked him immediately. They picked 16. They pissed you off. <laughs> uh, I, I, I always feel like we prefer it that way. Yeah. Like, we, we, we like Chip the fire. on the shoulder? Yeah. Man, it, it, right like that? It's just right like that? It goes just adds home. to it. I think, you know, we, again, we prefer it that way. We like flying under the radar and just kind of sneaking up on people, and we don't prefer to be talked about. And I think that's kind of what this coach know brings is, is he's kind of all about the work and again nothing about the last coach and anything he did but I just think that this is what his personality is it really fits what we about at Michigan State and that's why I feel like we'll be successful with him so when you look when you're judging progression on this team are you going to look optically what you see in the field or are you going to get caught up in the record of course. So, is, there, is there a number of wins that you're going to no, require? No, because for me, I, I think it's, and not just for me, I think for most guys, especially former players, it's just about being competitive. Because we've all been, you know, I played on a team that was 3-9. and nine. So realistically, you know, you can't be down on guys for losing games because we all know how it goes. It's, you know, a couple of mistakes here or there could mean the difference between you know, nine wins or five wins. So it's not about that. It's just about competing and being competitive and not laying down. I, I feel like that's what we all look forward to. You know, that's what we look forward to is seeing that competitiveness. And the dog, that's where the dog comes from is being competitive. Yeah. So this Spartan dog thing, how long has this been in play? It's a mantra, it's label. Oh. You that's, when that's, they... that's, that's my error. I mean, that, right that before, right before. Zero? Yeah, it, it got ramped, I'll tell you when it got really ramped up uh, in uh, 90 and 90 or 2013-14. Those two great teams, as you know, no fly zones, Spartan dogs. 
that's when it popped, I mean, more recently, but it goes back then, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mid-80s, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and a lot of people won't, you know, I'll tell the story because I, I was part of the story. You know, Coach Coach Perlis, you know, he wasn't a real fan of, of uh, black Greek society, of, of, of the players, black players being in, in fraternities. It wasn't, it wasn't like, it was kind of, not to say frowned upon, it just well, wasn't. Well, I mean, uh, both Schumacher, uh, they, were, they were, in my fraternity, they were football players before I got there. Right. All, of, of white, you know, and then, and then the blacks went, you know, out or a cap out the side. Sure. Uh, they 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 were still able to maintain that at Michigan, but so, so at, at Michigan State there was no there was no black uh, football players that were that were Greek when I was when I was there. I was really? like the, one of the first one because I played Sigma in the spring of '87. Gotcha. And you know, and a part of that was because you know the culture at Michigan State at that time, black Greek was was really big. In, in, at that time, it right. was, you know, everybody was on campus. It was yeah. huge, and you know, Spartan Dog would be. It was like the biggest gang next to that, but they could wasn't looked good upon to go join a fraternity. Whatever, right. I joined because my brother was a sigma. So well, it takes time. I mean, it, it's just a lot of trust yeah, me. It's I mean, a lot of time. You know, it's a lot of time. Student athletes football, man. I mean, think about you, the time you had to put into that. Okay, I mean. Well, I'm gonna tell you what's was interesting, uh, even because I, I know the story that that he was talking about, but even more so, when I got here, it was frowned upon for somebody who was a football player to pledge a fraternity, because in, in our mind we was kind of like our own, own fraternity. Our yeah. own fraternity. Yeah, right. So it was so you matter of fact, he, he was the only person that I knew during my time that was actually in fraternity. Right. So that's how, you know, so basically that's what Spartan Dog became. It became the fraternity. As it should. For the football you team. You got it. That's enough. You know. Well, what fraternity so, does is make a, a big campus small. It gives your, your sense of community. And with a football team, big campus. Sure. Oh, you got, we, you got we're all there together. We're doing whatever. it. So right. so me and you know, I had the best of both worlds, you know. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, and I was kind of like. You know, I use that as a liaison to the guys. Like, look, we have parties or whatever. Like, when my fraternity threw one, like, all right, man, look, I get y'all. We gonna get the Greek price. Y'all come at this time at this door, and we good, no problem. And we had no problem. Everybody else, hey, man, you better figure it out, cause uh, it's my dog show. Up. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be different. Yeah, <laughs> we're rolling up in there. Yeah, you know, hundred deep. That's gonna be. Was that the best times? Okay. Oh, that, right. that's, them, the them, time, that's the best time. That's the best time. College is the Definitely. best. And, and I'm to, to add to to the story, um, another thing a lot of people don't know was Spartan Dog started off as for all sports. It wasn't just a football thing. It started off as all sports. It just kind of morphed into a football, football. thing. That's true. It, it has a more football label. Yes, I mean, yes. It makes sense. And, and now, now it's gotten back to the point to where more sports kind of identify with it. But for a while, it was kind of just looked at as a football thing. But it started off as a thing for all sports. It's like I try to explain to people because, like, if you're playing college sports at that level, you are not the same. Like they're not like us. You, they are. You are not. Like everybody else, you are definitely a different person. Oh, absolutely. And so, yes, if you are playing, if you are playing volleyball, if you are on the rowing team, right. if you are on archery, if you're a tennis player, we know what you're going through. So right. you could be the best. You no, know, you are a Spartan dog because you got that mentality. Well, you have to balance. I mean, you got the academics, you got the social, all of that. You got being away from home for a lot. You know, freshmen, things like that. Absolutely. You you are special, and so you, you deserve you have earned the right to be a Spartan dog. Right, right. Okay, uh, I didn't get your standard of acceptance of what's going to make you happy or. Oh, we talked about it. You know, I mean, I I would I would like you're six. Not up in the record of six no, six. I mean, I, I I would love to see six in a bowl game because now it just show it. Get, you know me, I'm about bowls. I love the bowl games. I want the kids to be able to go and experience things that they maybe would never have. I mean, 
being able to go to, to go to Hawaii for the Aloha Bowl, I've never been back. My goal was to take my parents back, which unfortunately they passed away and, and won't be able to do that. But I would never have been able to see Hawaii. It opened the yeah, you know, experience. I've been to California one time for the Rose Bowl. Yeah. You know, I've been to Texas a lot. I've been to Florida a lot. But yeah. you know, those two things, you know, I've never, I would never. Try, nobody's just going to Hawaii just because. Yeah. It costs oh, too yeah, much money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, six wins just, and it allows them, it allows us 15 more practices so we can continue to get better and we can get, you know, kids in, recruits, and all, all that stuff builds to get us where we want to be back to and that's hopefully playing for getting into the uh, CFP, and which, I'm, you know, I really don't really care about that, but that's what right. the world's going to, CFP, the 12 game, 12 playoff teams, and you know, maybe win a national championship. Okay, one last final question for Jake. Okay, so what was Big Joe like when you arrived on campus? What was he like? Uh, I mean, just, you know, be totally transparent with him. He had, he had a huge truck. I don't know what make it was. Oh, I can't real. I big just remember it, 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 <laughs> it was the truck with the big dual tires on the back. Yeah, dualies. He had, he had the Four system. Tires. Four tires. He had the system, the system in the bed. It was rocking the world, right? And he was he was just, I mean, really, he's the, the same person he is now, quite honestly. He was the, the same person he is now, probably a little bit bigger. So, so you're coming in as an incoming, did, did he, um, lack of a better term, hate you? Did he make it tough for you? No, it was, we, we never had haze. And never so, had the, so the one thing that we had at Michigan State was freshmen were called boogers. Like, that was the one thing that upperclassmen called freshmen. They call well, you boogers. I mean, six and stones break the world. That's it. <laughs> you were a booger. Okay. But, but that's everybody. I, it, it, it's kind of like one of those things book. where if that's all you got, it would be horrible, but you also got love along with it. The booger thing was just kind of keep you grounded and keep you. Well, it also you know, bonds in your you place. as freshmen together. Definitely. Right? Definitely. Yeah. Now, yeah. And well, it's because, funny you say that because all of my best friends to this day. Our guys that I came in with. Absolutely. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with And that's the thing. And see, then to take it one step further, see, because back then you had the one through 99, right? Yeah. But if you're a walk on such as myself, yeah. you didn't get the number, which now everybody gets the number that they have, which yeah. is wonderful. And everybody sweats to. But my locker was 118. So on all my stuff, it said 118, which I always thought was bullshit, but you know, whatever, it is what it is. <laughs> but you had the one, you know, locker yeah. one through whatever, yeah. and that's your locker number was yeah. your number. Sure. But over on the side by showers around the back, that's where oh. that's where the boogers were. That, well, oh, we, well, well, everybody is a freshman that's a booger. Yeah. But if you were over there, we called that booger row because that's where we were, the walk-ons. So we had our own special area, but it was kind of surrounded by some of the guys, you know, very good friend of my rest in peace, Brian Vuletich. Oh, yeah. His his number was 33, which was right. Him and Highland Hicks were right there next to me. So, you know, it was kind of entwined. But once yeah, you got over Mylon, on Milan Vuletich's son, Milan was his dad. He yeah, and then Dan and all the yeah, coach yeah. at Michigan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he went to North Carolina and came back to Michigan State, yeah. and he yeah. just died. Uh, what, what two? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, yeah. I think it was about a year ago. That's, yeah. That's sad. Yeah. Love that dude. He was, he was, now he was the most down to earth cat yeah. ever. But, uh, yeah, so you got to, you know, that was, that was our thing. So now, you know, you ever see one of our guys, if I ever see one of my guys that was on Booker Road with me, you know, I got all the love in the world from there, from the Jerry Todd's of the world go, to, I mean, that's that, man. I'm telling you, the best five years of my life. All right. Well, hey, it's been awesome to have your fellow booger here, Jay Green. <laughs> Smart dogs, and, uh, baby. We got, I think we got. I think we got to bring Jay Green back. Of course. We'll bring him during the season, season for sure. Time. He Any did time. a lot of radio with Jack Evans and I. And, uh, good dude. Learned a lot. He keeps when we talk. We don't like you just said. We don't shit. Nah, yeah, Jelly, what you think? Nah, hey man, look, we gotta fix this. We gotta fix that. You know, like you asked the question before. Well, do you guys have your when you have your conversations? You know, do you, 
We absolutely, absolutely, we keep it real. Like, hey man, no, that kid's not very good. Well, I know, yeah, I mean, and that's between you know, themselves. I don't exactly, we we definitely have them that's conversations part because part if it's, if you don't, then what are you doing? Then you become a what? Become a fanboy, and I'm not gonna be no fanboy. Kerry King don't like them fanboys. Uh, I we well, put too much blood, sweat, and tears in to be a fanboy. Yeah, call us fanboy. Uh, we'll we'll like the Tom State community on our YouTube channel and on please, Facebook page. Please watch do. Watch all our podcasts. We love you. Hey. You know, just until, understand your role. Yeah, and until next time, as Gary King always says, go green. <laughs> go white. I'll say go blue. See ya.